So now for the part I'm most excited about, man, the, the damn sailboats, the damn sailboats. And I think in part the reason I, I'm doing this podcast is because I can't wait another month or two months or or for season three, six months down the road uh, to talk about the sailboats. I want to talk about damn sailboats. So I want to talk about them and you guys are going to enjoy it, I hope. <laughs> All right, so let's just start with uh, with boats, you know, uh, with, with just boats. So I guess option one, uh, and obviously these aren't all the potential options. These are just kind of you know ones that that I that I, I thought would be would be good to include here. But uh, you know, number one, you could just you know get a sailboat with your free mate or by yourself, and uh, you know you could have a nest egg already where you you you've, you've already made the money and now you're just uh, kind of retired, I guess. Uh, or you know you could run a uh, you could be an entrepreneur on that boat or, or whatever but uh, I mean you could just you know sail around and stop at whatever countries you decide to uh, you know go in and get supplies and then go live out in the water for a couple of months or whatever it is I mean the options are pretty much endless for that one uh, and as I, as I was kind of uh, uh, postulating in the uh, the end of the direct action series when we talked about this I mean there are just so many options I mean if you have just uh, you know uh, uh, I'd say like a mid-sized boat or something like that and you can and you, you can you can tow around like a, a flat a boat with a flat deck on it or something uh, you get some topsoil and uh, you can grow your own food out there on the water hell hell uh, you know there's enough sun uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean the, the options are, are, are honestly endless uh, and it's pretty much just whatever whatever creativity you have you can put it to use and uh, uh, the only limitation uh, is your imagination uh, <laughs> in, your, in your creative mind. So uh, that's one, uh, you know, if you're a pioneer, an engineer, something like that, or you just want to find freedom and you're interested in, you know, developing some of these things, uh, that's definitely a possibility. Uh, <laughs> definitely a possibility with, uh, with you know, uh, possible possibly huge returns. Uh, number two, uh, you could, you know, live, uh, I, don't, I don't know the exact number of miles. It used to be three miles. I think it might be 20 miles now. Um, but uh, you could live, uh, you know, X amount of miles off the coast of, you know, like uh, off the east coast of, like, let's say the United States. You would just be into international waters. Uh, so you'd be out of the jurisdiction of, you know, the American government. And this one uh, is where, where things kind of get kind of get interesting. And I, I, I kind of I got this idea. I'm reading uh, John Fisher's book, The Last Frontiers on Earth, Strange Places Where You Can Live Free. And uh, he was the editor of uh, Rhea's book, Vano, the Search for, Search for Personal Freedom. So I'm kind of gathering up all of the Olympianics uh, library here. <laughs> I've got another, another few to read after this one. But, uh, but definitely, definitely fascinating. Uh, and this is something that, uh, that he kind of postulated as far as, as a possibility. Yeah, so you live, live uh, right off the coast into inter international waters. And, you know, it could just be for comfort. Like uh, if, if you're trying to like a low activity sort of, uh, um, sort of lifestyle. Uh, where it's it's just you, you and your free mates and, uh, and and you're just out there. Uh, I mean, obviously you got to treat your woman right, or you, you got to treat your woman right. So uh, there may be times whenever you know anniversaries and things, and you want to uh, uh, you're close enough to you know the the cities where you know you could take her out for a night on the town uh, and then head back out to uh, international waters uh, <laughs> at the end of the evening. So uh, so you could still you could still enjoy like some of the amenities of like the big cities, like if you want to go out and get some drinks or go to a movie or, or whatever, uh, you could. You could still you'd still do that because it'd be a, a short commute, uh, you know, from from the ocean, from the international waters, uh, to uh, to wherever you're porting your boat. Another kind of interesting thing too, and this is what I I think turned most people off uh, about uh, you know uh, in, in Rayo's book when he was doing his van nomadism thing. That kind of turned some folks off, and then even more so whenever he decided to you know ditch the van essentially and uh, go live in a polyethylene a tent. So essentially, it's a piece of plastic. Uh, hung over, uh, hung over a string, and you know, uh, jimmied up in a, in a way where they could live there, when it, where where him and Roberto could live there. So not very comfortable. <laughs> I know he mentioned uh, in the book that uh, there, like when it was cold out there in the Siski region, uh, Northern California and Southern Oregon, uh, in the winter, yeah, they they just yeah, they, he pretty much said like they couldn't do anything because once they you know left the the warmth of 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 their of their structure, uh, yeah, they they pretty much had, had to lay in bed and like read. And that's all they could do. So it was definitely not comfortable. But with the advancements in technology, uh, I mean, you know, living on a sailboat uh, uh, could be much like, you know, living in an apartment in Manhattan. Uh, only you wouldn't be subject to uh, uh, the whims of those who falsely imagine themselves to be our rulers, right? <laughs> so, uh, I mean, uh, I guess most importantly, uh, at least for me, like when, when I'm kind of considering like, okay, so how could this work for me? Uh, well, you know, if you're, if you're right off the coast in international waters, you could probably still get, you know, cell, cell service. Uh, so you could have like a hotspot. Um, I mean, uh, if you, you could probably get a, you know, satellite too, I would imagine with, uh, with like high speed internet, which would be pretty, pretty neat, uh, to have that, have that out there on the water. So, I mean, you could, you could run like an entrepreneurial venture, uh, out there, like a small scale one. I'll get to a more large scale one in a moment, but you could still have those amenities. 
uh, and you could live very, very comfortably. Uh, and and then also too, I mean, the, the advancements in you know, uh, you know, I guess electricity too, you know, power. Uh, there's solar winds, and then there's something that John Fisher mentioned. I don't know how complex this would be. Uh, I just heard of it a couple of days ago, and I haven't had a whole lot of time to look into it. But it's called it's uh, something called ocean thermal energy conversion.